Hey guys, welcome back to Andy's Dinosaur Reviews, and today we are back with a brand new Beasts of the Mesozoic release. We have the newest release in the, I guess you could say, Raptor series, but at the same time, it's not actually labeled as Raptor series, and I don't think they actually have, like, series attached to them anymore. They're basically just Beasts of the Mesozoic, but as you can see, we have the Utah Raptor, and it looks absolutely drop-dead gorgeous. I would honestly say, looking at it here through the window area, it's probably going to be one of, if not my favorite, Beasts of the Mesozoic releases yet. You can also see a nice image here on the side of the Utah Raptor, as well as the species name, and the fact that this is in 118th scale down below. If we turn to the side, of course, you've got the Beasts of the Mesozoic logo. And then here on the back, you can see a really nice shot of the Utah Raptor, as well as some information on both the species and the figure itself. And then down here showing off a few other figures, a few other species that are available. And obviously, as you can see, we've got a nice collaboration between all sorts of stuff, whether it be raptors, ceratopsians, tyrannosaurs, all kinds of stuff down here. So let's pop the box open and check it out. So contained within, of course, we have the assembly instructions, something that's always very important to look over, especially if you are new to the beasts of the Mesozoic. You really want to check this out and uh, pay attention to it. It's just very, very important stuff. On top of that, we've also got the card. And I love the fact that they continue to include these cards. And as you can see, the artwork associated with the Utah Raptor is as gorgeous as it gets. And then here on the back, you've got a nice little image here, like some dino toy photography. And again, information on the species and everything like that. And on top of all of that, we've got some extra stuff in here as we have the stand that you can use for the Utah Raptor to help it stand obviously you've got different you know connections and stuff like that like you usually have and then you've also got like alternate feet these feet seem to have just like slightly different positioning for the toes compared to the feet that are on it currently and then the utah raptor itself and man that is absolutely incredible if you ask me. I can say in my own personal opinion that this is the single most realistic looking and probably best painted Beasts of the Mesozoic figure that I have seen yet. Like everything on this looks as natural and lifelike as it could possibly get. It definitely looks like the exact sort of coloration I would expect to find on a Utah Raptor if I happen to encounter one in person let me see if I can get it to stand as I know a lot of the older Raptors really couldn't stand I think this one seems to have pretty solid ankles so it definitely looks like it's going to stand I just have to get the feet in that good position to get it to stand and there we go let me readjust the camera get it down here to a nice and eye level here with the Utah Raptor and you can really see how nice this looks they did such a fantastic job on this one the colors are so natural on this the paint application is super smooth the factory really should be commended for this one because it looks honestly better than the prototype did in my opinion it is perfectly painted from what I can see so far and like I said I would say it's probably the single best paint painted release so far as far as what I can look at and say yes that absolutely looks like it would be the color of that dinosaur in my opinion this is probably the best that the beasts of the Mesozoic has had to offer so far even though everything's been pretty darn stellar the entire way through like this is seriously on another level so let's jump to a closer look and check it out from there so starting up here at the head sculpt of the Utah Raptor, first of all, you can see we've got some really nicely sculpted skin texture up here in the snout. It looks really good. And when you get nice and close and really examine it, you can see how incredibly highly detailed it is. And they've done an excellent job of painting it out, even adding in variation of color right here to the skin textured areas. You've got dark brown here, but then you have like a black as you lead closer back. You've also got some lighter tones kind of creeping through the skin right here that looks like maybe it's been, I wouldn't say that's a wash, probably just like the lighter tone and then they dry brushed over it. But I love that addition. It looks really nice. You can also see the nostrils right there. As you move back, you can see some nice detailing in and around the eye. The eye itself is painted with a white, given a black pupil. Also sports a nice gloss coat, which you can see shining right now with the light. Definitely giving it that nice, realistic kind of wet look. You can see a little bit more darker tones dry brushed over the edge of the lower jaw there on the tip of the snout. You can see moving back, you've also 
also got a nice light tone, kind of like an off-white. You have more of that up here, but up here they've applied a super nice dark wash that really brings out all of the fantastic feather detail. And even up here on the top of the head, you can see quite a bit of variation to the feathers. Like you've got really fine feathering here, larger feathering moving down the center of the head. And as you move back, you can see some dark brown picking up, and you can also see the coloration start to transition to some alternate tones of color moving back. We do also have a little area of blue right back here behind the eye, just a super small, subtle addition of that color, which is a really nice touch. Of course, you have an articulated jaw for the Utah Raptor. It doesn't seem to go super wide, though, actually. It almost, I feel like that's probably about as wide open as it's going to get. But inside the mouth, you can see we've got a pretty bright pinkish tone in there. You also have a nice gloss coat helping to make that detail shine. When you look at it from right here, not only can you see that, uh, you know, gloss coat giving it that saliva-like look, you can also see the tongue in there. The teeth are all nicely sculpted, all individually sculpted and painted. Very nice, careful paintwork. There also looks like there's probably a wash in there, maybe like a reddish wash, possibly. Yes, definitely. You can really see it from this vantage point. And again, you can see the teeth right on this angle as well. Look at how precise the paintwork is there for the teeth. They are all so perfectly painted. There is just zero sloppiness on these Beasts of the Mesozoic releases. As you move back here, again, you first of all have one spot of articulation right here in the back of the head. That can, well, let's see if we can get it to just show that area off. You can see how it kind of, kind of like can twist and uh, swivel. It can also go up and down right there. And then you've got another spot right here, which can do pretty much all of those same things and it is extremely, extremely smooth. Then you've got one more area right here as you move down, and all of that ties together to give you some really nice, very impressive mobility in the neck, and absolutely some of the smoothest neck articulation that we've ever had on any raptors in the beasts of the mesozoic line so far like this one straight out of the packaging is already just so smooth when it comes to the articulation sometimes they're a little stiff and it takes some time to kind of wear them in but this utah raptor right out of the gate is absolutely as smooth as it gets and as you move down through the course of the neck you can see again the feather detail looks fantastic you've got tons of variation of color with different variations of browns and off whites even yellowish browns and stuff moving down and the feathers are all all individually sculpted so spectacularly and I love that there's just little areas here where you can kind of see like one or two feathers that have uh, again lighter tones showing up in different spots we also have dark washes applied to really highlight all of the feather detail as you continue to move down you can see the feathers increase in size quite a bit moving into the body but you can also see so much variation to the browns you've got dark browns reddish browns kind of light browns up here on the top all of it looks fantastic. The paintwork is so smooth. The transitions are so smooth. And again, the actual fine detail to the feathers is incredibly, incredibly impressive. As you move down into the arms, you see some really fine feathering. Again, variation of color all the way down. And then, of course, as you move down into the arms further, you get a really beautiful display of plumage. And yet again, when we get nice and close, just like take in how good the detail is of those feathers. That is far and away some of the single most impressive fine detail I've ever seen on a feathered dinosaur model. You can also see, again, we've got more variation of color with like reddish browns, darker browns. You've got white kind of shining through. Again, more variations of browns all tied together with a nice dark wash. It looks so good. And then when we turn around here, take a look at the underside, you can see, again, even variation of color down here. Again, the nice wash has been applied to really highlight all of the feather detail. Even on the underside, you can see the palm of the hand very nicely sculpted. You can also see we've got kind of like an orangish sort of brown tone for the hand. Dark wash applied there as well. The nails are painted with a nice glossy black, but they do also have a little bit of like a light gray dry brushing just to give them a little variation of color. They also have a nice genuine sharp look to them and a gloss coat to help them shine. Moving down through the arm, you can see we obviously have shoulder articulation, which goes forward and back, also out away from the body. You can see we've got elbow articulation forward and back, and then you also have wrist articulation forward and back. So really nice, really smooth articulation in that area as well. As you move back here, you also have midsection articulation, which can, can go side to side and up and down. 
Definitely giving you lots of possibilities as far as displaying this one. You've got a light tone moving along the underside of the Raptor. Moving back into the hip region again, some more reddish brown kind of sprinkled in here. More light browns moving along the top. Moving down here into the thigh, you can see that we've got more like wavier, almost emu-like feathering down here as it's just kind of like scruffy feathering moving down the course of the leg. You can even see it kind of shooting off and hanging off the back of the thigh. And again, we've got the dark brown, the reddish brown, the... Uh, sort of like off-white here at play, again moving down through the course of the leg. You can see that the darker tones do disappear as we lead down here into the calf, and you can see again that we transition away from the feathers as we lead toward the ankles, and again we get the skin texture for the lower part of the leg down into the ankles and the feet. You can see that as well. Sports again the same color we saw in the hands as well as a dark wash, and you also have a very, very nicely sculpted toes. You look like you've got like some scoots moving down the toes. Nice sickle claw. They again have a nice genuine sharp look painted with that black and again some light gray that's been dry brushed over and uh, very very impressively sculpted and nicely glossed again just like we saw elsewhere on the figure up there on the hand claws and you can see the dew claws are also sculpted and painted of course as far as the leg articulation goes we can go forward and back just like you would expect. Also out away from the body a little bit, not a whole lot, but you can come out away from the body a little bit. You've got the knee articulation, which again is super, super smooth forward and back. Can it swivel? Yes, it absolutely can. As you move down, you've got another spot that can articulate right here forward and back and also swivel. Then you've got another spot down here. Again, this is where you would pop that foot off to apply the other foot. And this can also move forward and back again, giving you lots more opportunity to articulate and pose your raptor and then as you lead out you can see the tail feathers become super impressive you also have kind of like a striping effect with the browns in between that sort of off white moving out and man oh man is the feather detail fantastic on this you can see again from up above all of the super nice fine detail within the feathers i also love how the you know the feathers lead out you can see how they're so out of place some of them are perfectly sitting there some of them are kind of a little erratic as far as the placement goes just so much life and realism like it looks like a living breathing animal and the way that the tail would look on a living breathing animal if you see like modern day birds sometimes they're missing feathers some feathers are just kind of messed up and out of place and stuff and that's exactly what you see on this raptor again the same thing from the opposing side it looks as realistic when it comes to the sculpt as it gets and look how super smooth that paintwork is it is fantastic and of course you can see the underside also features some of those browns as well as that same off-white and the incredible fine detail we saw all through the course of the upper side of the figure but you also have again this spot of articulation right here it can go up down left right and it could swivel i think possibly but I'm not really going to try that and then again you've got one more spot here up down left and right and a wire tail just to iron the figure out and its incredible articulation so like i said absolutely one of if not the single best beasts of the mesozoic releases we've ever seen also i forgot to mention when i was checking out the articulation that you do have the ability to articulate this toe right here as well something i almost completely glanced over i think the only thing that i'm not completely sold on is the articulated jaw on this one because it just doesn't open all that wide like that's as wide as it goes and as you can see it kind of starts to close on its own it doesn't seem to go all the way closed once it starts to go closed but it also kind of has a little bit of trouble staying closed once i close it but those are just super minor nitpicks as far as the figure goes you know i still think it's an absolute masterpiece now because the raptor stands so nicely i'm not really going to mess with any of the stands but there are some pretty cool ones like this new one seems to be pretty neat where you can kind of basically like alter the height that you want it at and then you just turn it and you now have it basically set at that height so you can display it with this stand if you want you know the extra added support or if you just need this of course for different more dynamic poses i do think that's a pretty cool addition but what i do like i think even more than that is the fact that they've also given given us that kind of classic old school beasts of the mesozoic style base and obviously it's clear there's no paintwork or anything for the newer ones but you can see it is textured nicely and if you really wanted to look more realistic you could just give it a quick paint job but i like that they've given us both 
as far as this release goes and you can see again you have the alternate feet which look really nice but you also have the different connections so that you can basically display the Utah Raptor however you want with either versions of these stands like I said I haven't really messed with them yet of course we've got lots of experience with this kind this new one's definitely new to me because it's the first release I believe to feature this one but it seems like it's pretty cool as far as a size goes for a length from the snout to the tail I'd say about 15 and a quarter inches or right around 39 centimeters but not quite and then for a height in the position it's in right now you're looking at just a hair under four and a half inches or a little under 11 and a half centimeters but of course that can change depending on the way you pose the raptor that would really be up to you to you know stand it more upright if you want or have a kind of crouched like i have it currently but for a size comparison there is mr papo t-rex the attack pack colovasaurus robert muldoon and the collect a human being next to our utah raptor from the beasts of the mesozoic line and you can see it absolutely has a very impressive size to it definitely a very large figure even at 1 18th scale again it's pretty big as far as the utah raptor goes we've also got a size comparison with a mattel velociraptor which obviously you can see the size is quite different we've also got one of the more average sized versions of the raptors obviously one sixth scale here that you would normally get from the beasts of the mesozoic raptor series line next to the utah raptor and you can see even though again the utah raptor is totally different as far as the scale goes because that is one eighteenth scale next to one sixth scale you can see that the utah raptor still drastically outsizes the average beasts of the mesozoic raptor then pretty much just for kicks, we have the Kenner Utah Raptor, which you can see has definitely a good bit larger of a size compared to the Beasts of the Mesozoic Utah Raptor. But I mean, if you're familiar with the Kenner figure, that was pretty much to be expected. Also, if you happen to have acquired one of the newer Nanmu Smart Series Velociraptors, you can see that the Utah Raptor is only a little bit bigger than those Raptors. Definitely kind of similar in size. So uh, just a little more bulkiness, I would say, to the Utah Raptor from Beasts of the Mesozoic. We've also got the Batat Utah Raptor, which obviously, again, no comparison as far as a size goes here. And then for one final size comparison, we also have the Beasts of the Mesozoic Utyrannus next to the Beasts of the Mesozoic Utah Raptor, giving you an idea of how these two size up next to each other and uh, also just showing you how incredibly gorgeous this Utah Raptor is in comparison to some of the other previously released Beasts of the Mesozoic figures. But overall, this definitely should help, I think, to give you an idea of a size. If there was anything else you wanted to see a comparison with, let me know, and I can try to get those up if I happen to have whatever figure it is available that I can grab it, you know, and compare it with. Maybe I'll put it in the community section or on Instagram or somewhere like that. So this brand new Beasts of the Mesozoic 118th scale Utah Raptor is as drop-dead gorgeous of a Beasts of the Mesozoic figure as I've ever had the pleasure of laying my eyes on. The sculpt of this is so highly detailed. It is absolutely ridiculous. The feather detail on this through the course of the entire figure is far and away some of the nicest I've ever seen. And it's also some of the most realistic I've ever seen. On top of that, it is extremely vibrant, very well done, and they really know how how to show off the sculpt work that they put into their figures because it's painted so nicely that it absolutely shows off how gorgeous the sculpt is it makes it shine perfectly if you ask me the way they've applied washes and stuff like that just absolutely makes the detail jump off of the sculpt and the paintwork again is on another level it is so smooth and so natural and everything on this looks exactly as i would expect it to on a real living breathing utah raptor it is definitely Definitely my favorite painted figure to come from the Beasts of the Mesozoic so far. And if this is any sign of the quality moving forward, man, they've honestly stepped it up to even greater heights than they ever have before. On top of that, the articulation is unbelievably smooth. It took them a little while, I think, to get to this point where they've absolutely ironed out the articulation perfectly. But I feel like we are at that point right now. I know I haven't really played with it too much, but just from like my handling it right now and articulating it and stuff, it is far smoother than most other figures that have come before it and just you know straight out of the box is so nicely articulated and so smooth with its articulation everything including the neck is extremely well done and very very impressive overall so as a whole like i said fantastic release definitely one that i highly highly recommend picking up and these are about to begin shipping very soon so if you want yours i will include a link in the description to where you can grab it so make sure you do that and of course like comment and subscribe and i will see you in the next review you.
Thanks for watching.